Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17 beta 2 has been out for a few days and has even more new features that have been found since the initial iOS 17 beta 2 is out. What's new video. We'll talk about those features as well as the overall experience as I've been using it full time on my iPhone 14 pro max and also my iPad pro. Also, we'll talk about your experience based off the YouTube community poll where at the time of this video, there's over 6,400 votes and 123 comments. I've used all of that different information information to compile the overall understanding of what it's like to use iOS 17 beta two. We'll also talk a little bit about iOS 16.5.1. Now, as far as new features and changes, one thing is really great. If you haven't seen this already, Apple added the name drop and airdrop animation. What that means is if you have iOS 17 beta two and you want to airdrop something from one device to another, just go into airdrop and you'll see all of your devices there. You can either send them this way or just bring the devices together. It takes a second and there's an incredible animation that takes place. Now it didn't show up properly here. Let's try it one more time. There we go. We see it move across. So it still is a little bit buggy. And then the other thing you can do is if you bring the devices close together and you're not in airdrop, you can actually name drop. So you can send your contact from one phone to another. So you'll see the name appear and then it sends your overall contact. So that's great. It just sends over there and it's not working a hundred percent here. Let's try it one more time. We'll bring it close together. There we go. And then it sends. So it should stay on the screen and you can see that here. So it says receive only or share. And then it also has your email address and information there. So you can share that and that's it. So super simple to share your name with someone else or your contact information and also airdrop in that name drop and airdrop animation have got to be one of the best animations we've seen in a very long time from Apple. Now there's an update to search and music. If we go into spotlight search and we search for an artist such as Taylor Swift and we have local concerts, you have to find one that this actually keeps track of concerts for though, tap on a concert. You'll see here it opens up in a separate app. This is actually a new events app that shows up. If we go to beta one, it doesn't look the same. So if we tap on the same concert, it opens up within spotlight search. So they've kind of added a whole separate app for that. If we go into our contacts app and within contacts, if we select a contact, you'll see contact photo and poster tap on this. And we now have the option to select the latest photo or a custom photo. Also, if we go into the phone app and then go to recents, if we tap at it in the upper left, tap our name, it brings up our contact card and shows an animation of what it actually looks like. So that's something they've updated in beta two. If you're using one of the new interactive widgets with beta two, they now animate when you tap on one of the buttons. If we play this song here, you'll see it animates instead of just instantly switching. So Apple's refined this with beta two. Something else they've also refined, which is much better has to do with haptic touch. I talked a little bit about this in the what's new video for beta two, but if we go into our settings, go to accessibility under accessibility, go to touch, then haptic touch. We have a new option here, but this new option, if we switch it to fast, makes it feel very similar to 3d touch. So when you go in and press it, it's super fast where default is kind of what we had before fast makes it just feel much better with 3d touch. So you'll see it even interacted a little bit as I touched it. And then it fully opens up the image when I press on it a little bit more, this is much, much better and basically a great replacement for not having 3d touch anymore. Now with the release of iOS 17 beta two, Apple no longer says developer beta two. It just says iOS 17 beta two. I didn't notice this initially with the release. And you can see here, it talks not just about the beta software update program, but the developer program as well. Maybe they'll just call it beta two since it's free for either. And you just pick which program you want to be a part of now. One other thing I wanted to mention is when you're checking for a software update, you can just pull down and it will refresh now. Now this was here with beta one. It didn't seem to work very well. Once beta two released, I actually had to go back, go to software update and check that way for it to show up, but it should work in the future where you just check for an update by pulling down. If we go into messages, then tap the plus on the left for our apps, then go to check-in. They've updated this. If you've never used it before with a couple new options, you can also get to those options and settings, but you'll see here, it says, choose the data you'd like to share if you don't arrive and you have the option of limited and full.
So Limited says includes current location and details about battery and network signal for iPhone and Apple Watch. Full, it says, includes all limited data plus route traveled and location of last iPhone unlock and Apple Watch removal. So just a couple different options. They've renamed this as it had a different name before. If we use a stand with our iPhone or a MagSafe charger and or we plug it in and tilt it to landscape, it will switch to a new standby mode. I've shown this before and once it switches, you'll see there, it remembers it based on the different charger you've connected. I shared that before, but some of the font options have been updated. So it's much thicker than it was before and it's easier to see. So you have different options of course, and much bigger fonts. So I think I like this one the most, but that gives you an idea of what it looks like. If we go into Safari, private browsing is locked and this is something we knew about with beta one. However, if you don't have any tab there, it actually won't lock it this time. So if we close this tab, go back to done, there's just private browsing and we're on our home screen there. If we close out of this, close the app, go back in because we have nothing there. It won't prompt us to unlock it any longer. So that's something they've updated. It's just a little bit of a nice update that seems to make it work a little better. Now, if we go into photos, they've made an update and within photos, you'll see we have an image of a pet and thanks to Cameron and Connor for letting me use this one. You'll see here on the left with beta one, we have a little image of a dog because photos recognizes it as a dog on the right. It's just a little paw print with beta two. The same is true if we take a look at a cat. Thanks to Sarah Dietschy for letting me use this image of her cat. You'll see here at the bottom on beta one, it was a little cat on the right. It's just a paw print again. So hopefully they go back to individualizing this. Let me know which version you like best in the comments below. If we go into wallpaper, press and hold, and maybe go over to wallpaper that's using photo shuffle automatically. If we customize this, then tap the three dot menu. We now have the option for a depth effect where we didn't have that within beta one. So if you want to use depth effect with it, you can, if we go into accessibility, let's switch back to wallpapers here, go into settings, then go to accessibility. Then we go to voice. So we'll go down here to personal voice. I have a personal voice created, or I did with beta two, it wiped it out. But if we go to create a personalized voice, hit continue, then it says getting ready or get ready to record, find a quiet place. We'll hit continue and create a voice. And now it wants me to set up a sound check. So let me do that. Now it says, read the phrase one of 150. So no longer is it a timer. It's now just how many you have to read. So if we go from one to the next, do you know who the president was in 1962? It's so moving to the next phrase. And now it's saying I've got one of 150 recorded. So I'll have to go back and finish this. I think this is a much better way of doing this instead of just making you repeat phrases or continue to say phrases for 15 minutes straight. It's much easier to get through 150 of them. Now, as far as storage goes, there's an update there. If we go to general, and this is sort of from beta one as well. If we go to iPhone storage, wait for it to load. If we sort this, here under size by name, it, you'll see as I scroll down, it actually groups different applications based on who made them. So for Apple, we have Apple Inc here and you'll see it's grouped fitness, messages, tips, keynote, FaceTime, and all the other ones that are pre-installed. If we scroll down more, go to show more. If you have different apps from Meta, they'll be grouped here as well. You'll see different ones from Google. Again, like I said, if you have some from Meta, they'll show if you have maybe Facebook, there it goes. It showed up properly. WhatsApp or Instagram, they show in a group. So that's something that's really nice to show you overall how much storage they're using. iOS 17 updates the keyboard to support quick path typing on Hebrew and Arabic. So if we switch here, you'll see as I move my finger, it actually swipes and creates different words. Now, unfortunately I don't speak either language, so I'm not exactly sure what I'm typing, but as I swipe, you can see a path follows my finger and then you can just type that way. So hopefully people find that very helpful that use Arabic or Hebrew. Hebrew keyboards. I've been using it for a long time on the English keyboard and it works great. On iPad OS 17 beta two, Apple continues to refine the user interface. If we go to the lock screen, you may have already noticed that if we go to customize, we have a widget all the way down in the bottom left. This is easily stuck there now where it just didn't work properly before. So if you want to move it around, you can move it, put it wherever you'd like. And it disappeared like we've had that issue with widgets for a while, but at least it stays where you want. Also, if we go to the home screen and if we have stage manager enabled, 
if we go into Safari or something else, if we press and hold on the app and then tap another app, whether it be on the left or from the dock, it'll quickly pair them together. Now I showed you, you could do this with the magic keyboard or any other keyboard while holding the shift key. So if you just press and hold like this, tap weather, you'll see it jumps to behind it. Now we have paired apps in stage manager. So it's super easy to do and a much nicer way sort of to group them together instead of tapping and then dragging everything all over the place. It just works simply now. Now, something odd that happened initially when iOS 17 beta two was released is that you could no longer reboot your iPhone using Siri, but it seems to be working now. Restart the iPhone. You'll see there it understands and then you can just restart and it works as usual. However, the first day it didn't work at all. People reported that as a bug. Now there are resolved issues that people were experiencing with beta one, the contact widget bug where you couldn't change a name. So if you went into the contact widget, let me go ahead and add it here. You'll see, I currently have it set to my dad. If I press and hold and then edit the widget, I can go in and change that. So I'll tap on it and you'll see it allowed me to change it and it will stay as I've changed it. So that's something that seems to be working now that wasn't for everyone before. They've also fixed an issue when you're texting someone using Android. People were seeing it fail before many are saying that's resolved. I haven't had the issue myself since also stickers seem to work for me. Now I can easily paste those. So within my stickers, I created these in the initial what's new video, but if I want to paste this sticker or another one, they're now working and I can create them out of any of my photos. Also live wallpapers seem to be working for some that's still an issue for me, but as far as the overall stability of iOS 17 beta two, it's probably the best beta or most stable beta I've ever seen this early on. Typically with early betas, they're super unstable. That doesn't mean it doesn't have issues still, but it's much more stable than we've seen before. As far as additional bugs though, we still have some music and CarPlay seems to crash sometimes. And I actually experienced this myself. Also stock iOS 17 wallpaper has gone missing for many. So if we go into wallpaper here, and then add one. You'll see as I scroll down, it's missing. Some people have said this has to do with dark mode versus light mode. Sometimes it shows up. I'm not seeing it at all, but it seems to have gone missing completely. Some are seeing it. Some aren't. If we go back to our wallpaper here, also other people are having issues with that keyboard bug still overlaying some of the keyboard or just sort of disappearing altogether within messages. I've had that issue. Notifications is still an issue for me. So if I scroll up there, you'll see it just sort of glitches and jumps up. I'm not sure why they haven't fixed it yet. I would imagine they've heard many of us complain about it though. Crossfade is seemingly working like I mentioned before, but most everything else seems to be working well. The one thing I haven't tested though is in magnifier. If we go into the new accessibility setting here and we have this new mode point and speak turned on. Let's see if it actually works. Let me turn it up a little bit and it works. It hasn't locked up yet. Let's see. So that seems to be working much better than before. So they fixed a lot of different things in this update and it's working much better for most people. The same is true with iOS 16.5.1. I'm hearing good things about that decent battery life overall. And for those of you using that or even 16.6 .6 betas, it seems to be a pretty decent update overall. However, 16.5.1 doesn't have all of the new features, of course, but the odd thing is iOS 17 beta two seems almost as stable as that version. I don't think we've seen that, like I said, in a very long time, if ever. As far as overall performance, I've had zero issues with performance on this scrolling through different apps, going into promotion up and down. Anything we're doing just seems to be super smooth and fast. I've really had no issues. It's been much better. Occasionally there's frame rate stutter, but this is an early beta. And usually I have to go back to the public version because they're so bad. So that's a great sign. Also, the phone is not getting overly hot. It is a little bit warm, but it's not super hot to the touch. And most of the time it's not heating up just randomly like it was with beta one.
If we take a look at the thermal camera, you'll see with the thermal camera during this video, it is a little bit warmer than normal, but I've been keeping the screen on. We've been talking about it and it's at 34 to 35.2 degrees Celsius, which is a little hotter than normal at about 95 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's not horrible, but it's definitely a little bit warmer than other videos I've shown, but right now it's much cooler than typical. So that's great. Now, as far as battery life, many have been asking me about battery health and my battery health is at 90. 92%. This is after 217 charge cycles, as you can see from coconut battery here. And it's just not great. I've never seen this before with any iPhone. I haven't charged them any differently. I put it on a MagSafe charger at night before I go to bed, take it off in the morning, charge it while I'm driving. I've never seen it drop below a hundred percent until probably late August or mid August. So I've never seen that. That doesn't mean it's a problem, but definitely iOS 16 betas were not great as far as battery, even the public release release wasn't. As far as my overall battery life, you'll see here that I had two hours and three minutes of screen active time yesterday, and it used over 75% of my battery. That's pretty terrible. But the day this released, I had six hours and 14 minutes. So it's not that great. Three hours and 31 minutes today with over 50%. It could be better, but it's an early beta. So I won't hold that against it. Hopefully it gets better in the future. But if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17 beta two, I probably wouldn't at this point, I would wait for the public beta, which is set for July. Typically Apple will release it in the first week of July. We don't know that a hundred percent, but last year we had sort of an early release there. And we have, of course, a beta three coming up as well. So usually around beta two, beta three, normally beta three, we'll get the public beta that will line up the same as that. I would expect beta three in a couple of weeks here, probably on Tuesday or Wednesday. And also we're waiting for iOS 16.6 beta four or RC. That will probably be this coming week on Tuesday or Wednesday. Then we'll move on to the final release and then maybe 16.7. So lots of things to look forward to lots of updates. And of course we're seeing more and more features with iOS 17, many more than much, many people expected. And it's much better than most people expected. Now let's take a look at a few of your comments from the YouTube community poll. Now we'll start with a couple comments from iOS 16.5.1 where Subia Polani says iOS 16.5.1 seems to have the best power and memory management of all iOS 16 versions. Hayden says running iOS 16.5.1 on my 14 pro max so far, no issues. Battery life is good. I can't wait for the final iOS 17 release in September. Noah Messer 5023 said running iOS 17 beta two on my iPhone 13 pro max and has been really good. They fixed a lot of the minor issues I had on beta one with the keyboard overlapping in messages and other third party applications. One infuriating bug I had on beta one was when I tapped on the address bar in Safari, it would crash Safari every time. Thankfully beta two has fixed that bug. Animations seem a lot smoother and snappier. It seems hopefully Apple is really focused on stability. Love your videos. Thank you. Running iOS 17 beta two on my iPhone 12 battery has been surprisingly better than beta one. The keyboard still glitches out, especially on notes. What's weird though, is the new wallpaper that came with iOS 17 disappeared for some reason. Other than that, my experience has been great. So that's everything with iOS 17 beta two. Of course, if I find anything else, I'll share that in additional videos about iOS 17 later on. And if you find anything, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.